In this video, we're going to see for a given transfer function, how do we represent it in observable canonical form where the numerator polynomial order is less than the denominator polynomial order. So in this case, the first step to start with is cross multiplication where denominator polynomial is multiplied with y of s and numerator polynomial is multiplied with u of s. So y times the denominator polynomial is equal to input u times the numerator polynomial. Keeping the highest order of s in left side, I'm sending everything else to the right side. So we have u times s square plus 6su plus 8u minus 9s square y minus 23s times y minus 15y. Now I'm going to segregate the terms based on the order of s. So first thing s square times u minus we have 9 times y plus with s power 1 as common we have 6 times u minus 23 times y plus s power 0 terms which is 8u minus 15y. So this is equal to s cubed times y. Now I'm going to write just for y, I'm dividing the entire expression by s cubed. And here we have s power minus 1 times u minus 9y plus s power minus 2 times 6u minus 23y plus s power minus 3 times 8u minus 15y. We can write y in terms of some constant a times the input u plus x1 being the state variable. If we compare this equation with respect to what we have, we can say in this y expression, we don't have any input without s powers. So a in this case is zero. So we can say the entire expression that we have here is just x1. So I'm going to say y is equal to x1. So to write in time domain, small y is equal to x1 where the capital X1, the Laplace transform, can be written as we can write S times X1 is equal to U minus 9Y plus S power minus 1 times 6U minus 23Y plus S power minus 2 times 8U minus 15Y. We can write this as x1 dot in time domain is equal to u minus 9y plus x2, x2 being the second state variable. So in s domain, x2 is given by this value. So if I can write x2, x2 is given by s inverse times 6u minus 23y plus s power minus 2 times 8u minus 15y. Before that, the important equations that we got, let's highlight them. We have y equals to x1 and x1 dot is equal to u minus 9y plus x2. And third expression, we can say from this, we can write s times x2 is equal to 6u minus 23y plus s inverse times 8u minus 15y. So in time domain I can write this as x2 dot the differentiation of x2 is equal to 6u minus 23y plus I can say this x3 a new state variable x3. So this is another important equation that we got here x2 dot. And now x3 in terms of s domain is equal to s inverse times 8u minus 15y that is this expression. So x3 s times x3 can be written as 8u minus 15y. In time domain this expression would become x3 dot is equal to 8u minus 15y. So this is the final important expression we have. So total we have four equations. 
three equations being three state variables relating to input output and the state variables themselves and output equation which is relating to state variable these are the four equations we got now we know that state variable representation should be like this x dot should be equal to a times x plus b times u which is state equation and output equation y should be equal to c times x plus d times u where a b c d are matrices and x is a state variable vector and u is a input vector y is a output vector but in this case we have single input single output system so u and y are one cross one matrices whereas a is three cross three matrix because the order of the system is three and that's why we have three state variables defined we didn't go for fourth state variable because the order of the system is three but now looking at this equation x dot should be depending on x and u not y but we have here x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot all depend on y we need to convert that to x we know y is x1 so let me rewrite the expressions here x1 dot is equal to u minus 9 times x1 because we know y is x1 plus x2 x2 dot is 6u minus 23x1 plus x3 and x3 dot is 8u minus 15x1 now we have all the four equations so let me rewrite this so all these four equations now let us represent them in the state equation and output equation form as we have three state variables we'll have x1 dot x2 dot x3 dot this is differential state vector which is equal to 3 cross 3 matrix which we have discussed a times the state vector x1 x2 x3 plus the b matrix times u x1 dot depends on u x1 and x2 so i can write x1 dot is 1 times u minus 9 times x1 1 times x2 and 0 times x3 so i can write x1 dot as minus 9 times x1 1 times x2 0 times x3 plus 1 times u so we have x1 dot expressed this way now x2 dot similarly minus 23 x1 0 times x2 1 times x3 and 6 times input u and x3 dot is given by minus 15 times x1 0 times x2 0 times x3 and 8 times the input u in observable canonical form we'll have the just above the diagonal matrix we'll have ones and we'll have a column represented with values negative now let's write the output expression so y can be written as with c being a vector x1 x2 x3 is state vector plus d times u we know y is simply equal to x1 which means 1 times x1 0 times x2 0 times x3 plus 0 times u so y is simply x1 this is how we represent now having seen the state equation and output equation now let us see how it can these equations can be represented in signal flow graph so I'm taking x1 as a state variable here and we know x1 dot if we have if we integrate x1 dot by using an integrator we get x1 so I'm writing here this is x1 dot now we know x1 dot is actually equal to minus 9 times x1 which means feeding back plus x2 I'm assuming x2 is somewhere here and magnitude 1 and I'm assuming there is an input u here 1 times u so I'm taking the u and taking over here yes 1 times u this is x1 dot this is x2 we know x2 dot integration we will get x2 so this node should be x2 dot but we know x2 dot is equal to minus 23 times x1 so let me take this from here minus 23 times x1 plus x3 which means I'm taking 
x3 here with magnitude 1 and it also depends on input so we have 6 times u and now for x3 we know x3 dot if we integrate with uh, integrator transfer function 1 over s we get x3 which means this is x3 dot but x3 dot depends on u so 8 times u minus 15 times x1 we have x1 node here so we'll take a feedback this will be minus 15 times x1 so this is x3 dot now x1 is nothing but y so times 1 is y and for simplicity I'm representing u here again with 1 so this is how a signal flow graph looks if you observe carefully for observable canonical form for every node the signals from x1 will come in and input will come into that point so signals will be coming in to these nodes whereas in controllable canonical form signals will be going out which means we take sampling of the signals there